have a problem, who's the first one to go to? Jesus Christ, not the world's wisdom. Amen? Amen. Be careful of the world's wisdom. Because you see, you're complete in Christ. I can testify personally, any emotional problem, any problems that ever entered my life when I became born again, I just took it to Jesus and he what? Solved it. I never had to go to a psychologist or a psychologist or... And I tell you what, if, I, if you ever gave my whole testimony, it, it, God's put me through the ringer a number of times. But I didn't have to go get help. You know, my, you know who my helper is? Jesus. Why? I'm complete. Yes. Now, don't misunderstand me. There's, the Bible says probably there's, there's wisdom amongst counselors. But, but, but make sure the counselor is in the Word of God. Yes. Not in the world's philosophy. Be careful. See, you're complete. That's all you need. All I need is Jesus. Amen? Amen. That's all, I, yeah. Amen. That's all you need. Everything's complete in Him. So please don't go outside of Him for help. No, run to Him. Amen? Amen. Run to Him. Then notice uh, fertility. That ought to be another sign in the belief, it, it, that makes us happy. Notice fertility in verse 3. That bringeth forth his fruit. Happiness is the believer who produces fruit in his life. You know, most of the time why believers aren't happy is because they're not producing fruit. They're stagnant. They're not producing anything. That's why you're unhappy. I had a person come to me one time and say, Pastor, I'm so miserable. I don't know, I don't know what's going on. You know what I said to that person? When's the last time you gave out the gospel? When's the last time you told somebody about Christ? When's the last time you led a person to the Lord? In other words, I said, uh, what kind of fruit are you bearing? Well, that's all that took. They got it. No, I said, uh, so I gave them an assignment. Guess what the assignment was? Here's some tracks. Pass them out. They come back the next week for counseling. Happy as a lark. I said, what are you smiling about? She says, I passed out those tracks and I was passing out those tracks. Man, I got to talk about the Lord. It was a strange thing. All of a sudden, I was happy. Amen. I said, you know what? You, know what you, just, you just solved your own. The reason why you were unhappy because you wasn't doing nothing for Christ. Amen. Doing something so simple like that made that person happy. Amen? Amen. It's the little things like that. It's, that. it's that bringing forth the fruit. You need to bring forth fruit. Amen? When I, when I have people come to me for counseling and, I, and they're depressed, of course, the first thing I do is I chew them out, get out of that process. Now, you choose to be in depression. You choose it. You don't have to be there. Okay? So guess what my homework assignment is? Huh? Go in the Word. Action. What would be my action plan? That person's depressed, so you know what I gave for an assignment? I want you to go find somebody that's in need. I want you to go find somebody that's hurting and might be sick. And I want you to go and minister to that person. You know what a great you know how people get out of depression? Do something. Get out of bed. Get out of do something. Help somebody. That person get back in this week. Guess what? Smiling. Ha well, what happened? Well, I was ministering to this person. And all of a sudden, in my ministering and helping them up, I, could, uh, I, I was happy that I did that. Boom. They're not in depression no more. See, I just saved them $2.50 an hour. <laughs> you know? I, I marvel at how the Bible has the answer for everything. You want to get out of depression? Do something. Action. Amen. I told that person, I said, you don't want me to come to your house and get you out of bed. I says, I will. I will. So, you know, somebody's in depression, call them up and say, listen, I'm coming over, get out of that bed. If not, I want to get you out of that bed and we're going to go do something. And then that action, all of a sudden they feel better, they're doing something, and, and all of a sudden they're happy again. Vitality, fruit, fruit, fruit's very important. Very important.
In John chapter 15, verse 16, you have to turn there. Jesus said that, that we are to bear fruit. Okay? Listen, are you bearing fruit today, people? Are you bearing fruit? Are you planting a seed? Are you doing something for Jesus? Amen? Uh, I got a kick out of Jerry. I love, I love that brother. He's always smiling. He's always got to have... You know why? He's always telling somebody. It's a, you ought to spend a day with him and see how he has a unique way of getting the gospel. And he has a unique way of telling people about Jesus. It'll blow your mind. And that's why he's happy. He's always doing something for Jesus. Amen? And it's, and it's remarkable because he'll come and tell me how he did that. And, 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 and some of the words that he used, like, it just cracks me up. I would never think of doing it that way. You know? And so keep up the good work, brother. You're doing a good job. Amen. Amen. So, uh, listen, fruit bearing is very important. Oh, man, I'm not going to finish this. Um, priority, in his season. See that? We're in his season. How wonderful this is. The happy man brings fruit, the right fruit, at the right time. That is perfectly said. Now watch this. The Bible says, in his season, our verse says. That means this, people. We must bring fruit at the right time. For instance, faith in your trial. What's the fruit? Faith. You're going through a trial and tribulation? Bear the fruit of faith, believing that God will take care of that situation. That's fruit. Okay? Fruit. That's the next word. Patience and suffering. Nobody likes to suffer, right? Nobody does. But, but you know, one of the fruits of, of a suffering is to be patient. Boy, you're going to learn that. And, 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 you know, whatever the suffering might be. I, 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 we experienced that when our daughter had the cancer. And, and boy, she suffered a lot. And we had to have much patience when, when that chemotherapy came in, all those drugs came in. I mean, she was, and, and I, I would say, Lord, give me, I need patience. Because she was so sick. And we had to be patient with her. And, and you know, at such a young age, and, you know, there'd be the crying, there'd be the hurting, there'd be the pain. And, and I, you know, as a dad, I wanted to fix it, and I couldn't. And I'd say, Lord, let it just give me patience while she suffers. Help me not to get angry. Help me not to, uh, you know, be pushy. Help me not, you know, say, suck it up, muffin. You know, like, you, you, can, you can't do that. You've got to have patience. That's a fruit. Fruit. Fruit and patience, and, uh, uh, patience and long suffering, and joy in prosperity. Amen. When God blesses you, be joyful about it. Amen? Amen. Nothing wrong with that. You see, that's what he means in season. And then perpetuity, verse 3 His leaf also shall not wither. The happy man's fruit shall not wrinkle with age. The, the believer's eternal life shall not wither. His fruit will abide forever. Amen. Aren't you glad this morning, you as believers, that what Jesus gave you in salvation, that will never wither. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. It will always abide. Always abide. And then prosperity, verse 3. And whatsoever he doeth shall what? Prosper. The happy man shall succeed and flourish. This is the sum of all the other six that I just gave you. That's verse uh, three on prosperity. That sums up all the first five I gave you. Uh, verse six principles. How do people see us this morning? Do they see us prospering, happy? Do they see our fruit solid, not withering? Do they, do they see us, our faith and patience? Do they see us planted in, in Jesus Christ in the river of water? We're solid in our salvation. Do they see security? Do they see vitality? Amen? If they see all of that, then they're going to ask you, what do you got? I want it. You understand what I'm saying this morning? You show them the opposite, <laughs> nobody's going to come to you. They'll stay away from you. Because they see the world.